one of the biggest things that people ask is why? Why is this happening? I've done nothing wrong. Um, you know, I made sure everything was set up per correctly before I imported this, um, and and still my shipment got stopped. So there are so many factors to to consider with regards to customs exams. Um, one of which is um, customs exams can be flagged by individual CBP agents. Uh, those agents can flag because something tipped them off on the documentation. You know, they saw a discrepancy between what was on the packing slip and what was on the invoice in terms of, you know, your invoice says that this is made in China, but your packing slip says that this was made in Taiwan. What's going on there? That's gonna cause a flag. Um, the downside to it being possible to be flagged by a CBP agent is um, CBP agents are human. Uh, sometimes they're in bad moods. Uh, sometimes they're, you know, being overly cautious and they just wanna make sure that they catch as much as possible. Um, and you know, on the wrong day, you get caught by the wrong CBP agent. Uh, there is that human factor. We're not gonna deny that. It would be silly to do that. Um, but it is something that we've seen and um, we've called CBP agents. And I, I will tell you that if you call a CBP agent and you ask them why, they're, why they flagged a shipment for exam, I'm not sure there's a force on earth that can get an answer out of them. No. Um, because like I said to them, this is a matter of national security. Um, all you need to know is that something made them want to examine this container and they will let you know when they are good and ready. And they're fully within their rights to do so. They will let you know that too. Um, that they, um, uh, they're the ones that have the intuition um, when they see paperwork, when they um, see manifests, when they see ISF filings to decide whether any of that triggers. And so there is that human factor. Yep. So um, that's one of the things to consider. Another thing to consider is the destination port. Um, much like uh, certain other parts of Customs and Border Protection, uh, such as, you know, how often they issue ISF penalties, destination ports have the authority to flag things for exam. Um, and if you bring something to a destination port that is different from a port that you've brought in in the past, let's say you've always brought in one product, you've always brought it in through the same port, it's always gone to the same destination, uh, let's say you always brought it to Kansas City, suddenly you're switching all of your product and now it's all going to Chicago. That is a red flag for customs. They wanna know why you've suddenly switched destination ports. It could be as simple as my main customer base switched to you know, the northern part of the Midwest and now Chicago makes more sense. Uh, it could be something like, you know, I uh, suddenly found that my ocean freight rate to Chicago was so much better, so I'm just gonna bring it there. All customs sees is that you've made a massive change to your supply chain and they wanna make sure that everything is staying above board. So you may see increased exams if you, predominantly use one single port and you've switched that. Um, another big thing is specific commodities. This is honestly probably the biggest one um, behind maybe country of origin. Um, specific commodities are definitely going to be one of the factors considered with regards to exams. Um, if you're bringing in something that is food grade, if you're bringing in firearms, if you're bringing in something that is you know, toys for kids. Those are things that most likely are going to raise more red flags for customs because they want to make sure that those things are safe for the people of the United States. Um, you know, CPSC is going to want to see toys more often than, you know, they're just going to look at, uh, well, CPSC only regulates so many things, but uh, you're, you're only going to see them flag certain items because those are things that they want to make sure um, come into the United States and are safe for the people using them. Uh, Specific commodities are targets, mm -hmm. uh, as are the country of origin. Um, the country of origin, it, it might be one or the other, and it could be both. It could be a specific product from a specific country, mm -hmm. or it could be one or the other. Yep. So, um, and any commodities related to FDA, USDA, APHIS, Tosca, ATF, all of the above um, are also targets. Yep. Uh, and with regards to origin country, the political situation of that country comes into play. You know, we see uh, more shipments flagged, for example, 
from places like Pakistan, um, anything coming from Venezuela, you know, places that are, are in a rough place politically, especially if they're in a rough place with the United States, you know, Turkey, things like that. Um, those are going to have, have a higher exam rate because if there's unrest in that country, the U.S. wants to make sure that that unrest does not overflow into the U.S. and cause us concern. Um, so having something from those countries is definitely uh, going to increase your chance of having a customs exam. So while we're on that topic, I've got a question that just came in. Um, and this specific importer was asking why their shipments are all of a sudden getting stopped um, when their origin country is Vietnam. Okay. Um, right now, the reason that those are most likely being stopped is because of the Section 301 tariffs. Um, because after the, imp uh, the implementation of Section 301, which for any of you who don't know, is the, um, it's the additional tariffs, either 25% or 15%, soon to drop down to 7.5% um, on almost everything out of China at this point. Uh, very few items out of China don't have Section 301 tariffs. That was uh, started as an intellectual property issue. Um, I think it may be expanded to more of a political thing, but that's, you know, a personal viewpoint. Um, and at this point, what we're seeing is one honest and one dishonest practice. Uh, the honest practice is people are finding ways to get suppliers who are based in other countries that are nearby for the same commodity. So Vietnam is one of those places. Um, people who manufactured things in China previously are moving their manufacturing suppliers, well, not moving their suppliers, some of them are, um, but finding other sourcing in other countries nearby, such as Vietnam or Thai, Thailand or th Taiwan, things like that. Um, and what customs wants to make sure is not happening is the dishonest thing that I was referencing. And that's the fact that some people are just using, they're making it in China and then they're shipping it to Vietnam, Taiwan, whatever, and then claiming that that's the country of origin. That is why customs is flagging more things out of Vietnam recently, especially um, because they wanna make sure that that commodity was actually made in Vietnam. And then it's not just a situation where the factory was in China, they shipped it to Vietnam, and then the shipping address is what's being used for the country of origin. So they're going, I won't call it a little overzealous because it's completely fair to double check, um, but they're hitting that harder than a lot of other places because they know that that's a really common practice when something happens, like a new anti-dumping case hits. Suddenly people are looking for other sourcing uh, and, and they, they try and find the most honest way to do it, but unfortunately, like I said earlier, everybody's human, and, and some people uh, are not always interested in doing the honest thing. They just want to avoid paying the duties, um, and that's what ends up happening is something dishonest happens, and someone starts claiming country of origin Vietnam when really it was just shipped through there. Excellent. Let's keep going. All right. So uh, another thing to mention is the change in tariff number, um, which is, again, another thing that's been really common recently with Section 301. Uh, having these additional duties of 25% on some items is causing a lot of people to really take a close look at, um, you know, their their tariffs and make sure that they're classified correctly. We at Scarborough are always going to tell you paying more for the right tariff is the better way to go because in the end, that's going to cost you a lot more, a lot less money than customs coming after you because you were misclassifying something to dodge an additional 3% in tariffs. And they will come after you hard for that. They will. If they get an inkling that that's going on, you could expect 100% exam 100% of the time. Yep. Yeah. So. Um, I mean, one specific example is we've got a client that's been with us for 15, 20 years, uh, since long before my time here. Um, they brought in a new compliance person, and that compliance person saw that there were some things that they were not doing right, and they did a complete overhaul of their database. We had upwards of 240,000 parts in our database. And we wiped all of that clean because they wanted to make sure that they were uh, getting the right tariffs in there. And what that led to was they did have some exams for a while because they suddenly uh, started seeing more exams because they saw a whole bunch of different tariffs. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, 
there's also certain things like random checks because just like at the airport, some people randomly get selected for an exam. That's just part of the process. Uh, random checks are um, more popular at the border too. Um, but the random check could be computer generated yep. or it could be CBP agent generated. If he just decides that day he's gonna look at every 10th truck, then that's what he's gonna do. All right, so um, another thing to think about is new importers are very likely to have exams on their first shipment or two, uh, just because Customs wants to make sure that you're doing everything right. So that's something that we see really, uh, really often as a new importer gets an exam on their first couple of shipments, just to make sure that they know what they're doing. Um, and then obviously anything that has quota, anything that has uh, statistical quantities that are varied, um, Customs wants to pay a little more attention to those and keep an eye on making sure that everything is done correctly on those. Um, factors to consider with exams. Uh, obviously, the type of holder exam is going to play into how much it costs, how much time it takes, um, what has to actually be done with it, um, you know, where it has to go, anything along those lines. Uh, can it stay, it, can it go to uh, just a bonded warehouse? Does it have to go to a customs bonded warehouse? Um, there's a lot of factors to consider and whatever type of hold you're talking about is going to play into that heavily. Um, and another thing that plays into that is uh, your relationship with customs. You know, we at Scarborough, you know, we've been operating in the port of Kansas City for 35 years. Uh, we have a good relationship with the port director of Kansas City and all of the customs officers at Kansas City. Um, and that's not to say that we're we're leveraging that relationship to do anything, you know, shady or anything like that. But having that relationship with a, a broker that knows what they're doing. Some importers are afraid to change customs brokers as they feel that this will place them on a list for exams. Is there any validity to that fear? I would say no. Um, I, I think what most likely happens that they don't see behind the scenes is that when you switch customs brokers, there's a transition period and things don't necessarily get done exactly the same way from one broker to another if you don't have all of the information up front. Um, you know, if, if that's a commodity that the new broker isn't used to handling and they say put some FDA information in there that's a little different from what the previous broker is, that's a red flag for them. Um, but I, I would say that most likely what they're seeing is, or what they're not seeing is that one broker is putting some information in that either wasn't requested before or was requested and was left off before. Um, and most likely that's causing that kind of uh, impression that the broker switch is what's causing the exam. Thank you.